Welcome back to another devlog for my mobile fishing game. If you're new here, I'm making a small fishing based roguelike for the mobile platform where you go on a fishing adventure, leveling up your fishing equipment and catch fish that get progressively harder to catch. Last time, we went from this bare bones area to a nice mountain lake. This time, I'm introducing different fish variants in the beginnings of the progression system. First off, there's no transition into the fishing minigame, so I added a simple transition. Also, when the fishing is complete, it slides back out. Next, I used this asset to update the joystick I was working with, and now it adjusts the position based on where you press it, an important UX feature for mobile games. I then started implementing a core feature, which is the ability to define different types of fish. I created a custom Godot resource, which is basically like Unity's scriptable objects, if you're familiar with that. I can define different things like the name, how fast the progress bar goes up and down, the speed, and a host of other things over here on the side. I've connected the resource to the game, so you can see that this fish has a bigger ring of bubbles and is a lot slower, while this other one has a slightly smaller ring of bubbles and swims faster. Sometime in between all of this, I finally started using version control with Git, which if you're not a programmer, it's kind of like backups, but on steroids. So if something catastrophic happens, I won't lose my progress, and I can create branches to test out new features. I then made three different fish models in Kenshape. Here's the blue pip, the mossy shell, and the daylight shell. I decided to create fake fish names so I don't risk putting an ocean fish in a lake and end up getting shamed on the internet. The model is so you can see it being displayed after you catch the fish. So I started with this little rotating animation. I then created these lines as a sort of display background and added in bubble particles, making sure to rotate and scale the lines to complete the entire look. Now, when you catch a fish, the display bounces down and shows you what fish you caught. I combined a bubbling noise and a victory sound I found on freesound.org to create this sound effect. The goal was to have each level require a certain amount of points to be collected before you can move on to the next level. Each fish has a different amount of points associated with it, and so I wanted to indicate that with some sort of stars. I created this component that tiles the stars automatically. In addition, I created this little animation using particle effects that fill up the progress bar. I can alter the number of stars that show up just by changing the number of particles that spawn. In game, it looks like this. I'm thinking some sound effects would bump the juice up a lot, but I'll leave that for later. Lastly, I implemented a simple health bar. The idea is if you fail to catch a fish, you'll take some damage. Your health stays persistent from level to level, so as you lose more and more fish, you take more and more damage, and eventually, when your health hits zero, you lose that run. Here's how it looks like in game. The health bar flashes white and you take damage based on a number I can tweak in the fish's resource. Anyways, that's all for this devlog. If you're interested in following along with the development of the game, please consider subscribing. I've got the level progression coming along next, so it should start to take the shape of a full end-to-end -end game experience. See you next time!